What was that magic object? Yeah, bro. We got you. Anything. You want that stick? Uh, stick of spontaneity. You want that wand of fireballs. Oh, you want they're, that. Mm, they're called um the box of Warden. Ah! 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 Oh, yep, that's what happens. And welcome back to Seeker and Confessor, a sort of truth podcast. My name is Frank. And I'm Lauren. And today we're covering chapter 28 of Wizard's First Rule. And today we are... Frog people! <laughs> we are frogs. Simply frogs. Just actually. frogs. Yeah, no, not frog people. This is our most of a stretch costume yet. Listen, new characters came on the scene. Spirit frogs. And that's us. They're new, I was going to say they're new fantasy creatures, but they're not. They're actually they're a real not, thing. No. We're the spirit frogs in, in the flesh, here to represent the spirit gathering that happens in chapter 20, the very important gathering of the spirits. Ribbit and Robbit, that's our names. <laughs> Who's <laughs> who? Uh, I feel like a Robbit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we didn't get either of these no. for this we had this that's worse you're I don't, telling it's, them like it's better i think it's worse if we went out and we're like oh i got an idea i'm buying the frog costumes it's, that's weirder yeah we just had them in stock don't worry about it these are in our house <laughs> before we get into everything mm. i just want to know uh, did you like this chapter nope. yes or no <laughs> okay so i guess that's why i'm no asking. not one bit me neither. Got a lot of caps locks on my note this time. Yeah. Every element failed. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what worked. Did anything? No. There was like one or two lines. I don't know. I ended up writing, my notes are so long mm -hmm. for this chat. Can you, like, I can't talk when you're fucking. <laughs> when I'm what? Why are you like moving around so much over there? I'm. A, uh, this is not a comfortable costume. <laughs> like you wanted to wear it. I uh, yeah, I begged for it. Oh, okay. You look like Yoshi. I do. Like this part down here. Yoshi. That was like Yoshi's cousin. <laughs> Bro, she. <laughs> the frog costume's got us acting silly. Got me acting straight crazy. <laughs> So yeah, before we get into it, what did you want to say? I ended up with so many notes because mm. the only things in this chapter that seemed to matter or like wordplay, logic, arguments that were going down. So I felt like we were going to keep being like, wait, what did they say exactly? Yep. What? So I had to fucking write all of these conversations down mm. verbatim. Yeah. I and so anyway, that. my notes are really long it's for okay. that reason. We're, we're I don't that... know if we're going to need any of it. We'll see. We begin... Exactly where we wanted to begin. We begin with bird whistling. <whistles> Basically, they're out in like the fields by the town. Yep. Hunters are there. Birdman's there. Richard and Kaylin are there. They're trying to get Richard to call a hawk. Yep. It seems. And <laughs> I guess when he blows the bird whistle, it appears that thousands of other birds show up which like what does that mean yeah so did you I, w I wasn't sure if that was the first time thousands of birds have showed up or if oh. he just tried so hard on the last one that they all came except for hogs i i don't know what impression i was getting to be honest with you because it was bad and it was dumb well, it's dumb for, like, so many reasons. Okay, as we go further into the chapter, we will be experiencing the spirit gathering. And there's a lot of information that Kaylin gives Richard, like, literally seconds before they walk into the oh, gathering. Yeah. Once again, well, this is better than her track record of not giving it at all. Right, but and it's only because Birdman forced her to, kind of. But uh, anyway. She learned nothing. I'm sort of like, why? you guys not be spending the day just talking prepping for the ritual about what you're going to ask how you're going to ask how it's about to go down what does richard need to know no instead you were like maybe he really needs to do bird calls right now it just yeah. doesn't seem that important i can't imagine in their scenario 
thinking this should be a priority. It really feels to me like Terry didn't want to write the rest of the day and just decided to waste it all doing bird calls. Well, clearly this is like Chekhov's hawk, right? Like this has to (laughs) become something. I am just, I just keep imagining like the climax with Dark and Raw and like the one thing that like distracts him in the perfect moment is going to be this hawk or something. There's, there's a, uh, you haven't seen JoJo, but there's a, a scene in one of the, the later JoJo's where an important item is tossed up to a seagull and carried away. <laughs> and now I just keep imagining, like, one of the boxes of boarded. Is- <laughs> and he's just like, go! Oh, and a hawk's like, ew! <laughs> Grabs it and just dashes well, off. What else? Why are we setting this up like this that Richard could hypothetically at some point call... Summon lots of birds a, or a Lots of or birds or an bird. important bird. Yeah. So the bird man's like, oh, you're thinking too much up here, son. Think in your belly. Use your belly. You're yeah. like, I, got, I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying, too. And if, if I cared. If, if, but it's always like this contradictory thing going on where he's like trying to get me to constantly feel the importance of the time crunch and the end of the worldness yep. of it all. And then he's also like, but you can chill out for a minute to care about this, right? And I'm like, not really. I can't do both. No. I don't want to do both. It's like in Breath of the Wild where they're like, 100 years have passed and Zelda's been tortured the entire time. Yeah. Do you want to learn how to ride horses like, to like, like but, get the, the thing, best coat? The thing and you're is, like, no. I say yes. But I. Yes. But here's the thing. Now I'm committed to being like, I'm collecting horses. Ha ha ha. And I'm not even think like the. T- I know. The intensity of the other plot line is now lost on me completely. <laughs> the only plot line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Kaylin's fucking like cackling it up over here. So are the hunters. Watching Richard suck at this. And I'm like, well, you recovered quick. Yeah. From right? last night. Like, Jesus. I almost feel like he wanted to put in this big comedy scene as a way for the reader to be like, we want to know what Kaylin is. We want to talk about what Kaylin's power is. We want to see her have to give that confession. But I care less about her giving the confession and even like obviously I do care I'm interested in that and I want it as the reader but I'm just thinking more from like a a very inner personal standpoint as a character I find it bizarre oh whiplash to have seen her doing something so terrible she sleeps it off and then she's like I'm just gonna go hang out with Richard like everything's fine I'm like don't you feel bad and then we'll go into it a little bit more she doesn't seem to feel bad (laughs) she really doesn't (laughs) like a little and then like she's still like but like, Jesus. It was really hot. They're leaving. They're like, Birdman's like, I give up on you. He says you're the worst bird, bird caller color. ever. Keep this necklace. It's useless for you. Like, it's a reminder that you actually, like, suck at some Like, stuff. children are better at this than you forever. Like, you'll never get good at it. Caitlin's talk- thinking about how... Her, she's in good spirits, and you shouldn't be, but no. she is. Yeah. And it's because, like, it's a little sunnier than it has where we, where we keep foreshadowing on the clouds, yeah. right? We're kind of being like, ooh, of why course. is it so why is it so bright out? Mostly what had helped her, this is why her spirits are up, is the way Richard had treated her. He had let her have time to recover from last night without asking her anything. He had just held her, let her be. I mean, I guess that's sweet. I don't know. So far, he's like, I'm not that worried about your problems right now. I'm kind of worried about you getting your shit under control yeah. to not hurt other people. Uh, that's exactly. Even though nothing more had happened, she felt closer to him than she ever had, but at the same time, she knew that was not a good thing. It only yeah. deepened her dilemma. She had almost made a very big mistake last night, the biggest mistake of her life. Yeah. She was relieved that he had pulled her back from the brink. At the same time, part of her wished he had it. Yep. How could you really? Like, it in the daylight, her, you're watching him. Part of her him. wished she had erased his soul for a little bit of sex with him. Demon. Demon. Part of her was like, mm, but it would have been good. Come on. Even in the light of day, you're not like, wow, I'm going to literally go vomit because I almost did that. Not her. I don't know. I, don't I know guess what to say about it's it. the fuck. Maybe like we're supposed to be taking away like confessor training makes you fucked up. You know what? And I'll compare this to something that comes later. Richard's inane conversations with the spirits. But part of the conversation later is about how Richard blames and maybe accurately part of the destructive lust that he has does come from the sword. Mm -hmm. So maybe part of her destructive lust comes from her confessor power. Maybe that's the parallel. Maybe it's like 
Yeah, she has this bad part of her. Yeah, that no, of is course they bad. both must because there are parallels of each other. Mm. I. But Richard's power. Well, actually, that's not true. I was going to say Richard's power has never made him want to kill Caitlin. That's actually not yeah, that's true. That's not true. I guess for some, something about Richard's. The way it manifests, he's always very, like, disturbed by it afterwards. It never goes as far as that yeah. for any, like, selfish purposes. He's always very, like, this is stressing mm. me out a lot and I don't like it. And with her, it doesn't well, quite feel external, that way. external and he just got it. And hers is internal and she grew up with it. So there's, like... But we don't get any, like, reflection where no. Kaylin's, like... That would be interesting. That would be interesting. That would be really interesting if Kaylin had been, like, I've experienced something even just vaguely similar at these periods of my life. Just something. Yeah. Rather than it just came across to me, like... Cold? Man. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm really horny. I really want this. Whoever This I is heard. the only way to get yeah. it, and oh, well. And it's, like... Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I know. I agree. And then I was confused because she says when she woke up in the morning, she didn't know how he would feel about her if he would be hurt, angry, or hate her. From Richard's point of view, without knowing all the things we know yeah. about last night, why would he be mad at her? Why would he hate her? For what? I think she's just twisted on this whole thing. I don't think she's very good at seeing things from other people's point of view. I'm just like, well, of course that makes sense given yeah. the context we are privy to. Yes. Exactly. But if Richard's just like, she's a horny girl who wanted to have sex with me and then just wasn't ready to tell me her truth. I don't like how angry would he, he stopped be? her on morality alone. Yeah. Not, like, no. Maybe that warning from the sword. Maybe, like, you know, he's she maybe doesn't she's know that. sensing that he has this like I don't know. That's, animosity. That's a lot. We have to do a lot, a lot of assumptions. Of and, yeah, the, I agree. There for that. I don't know. I just um, was sort of like, what did she think he'd be mad about exactly? Mm, maybe just her like sexual aggressiveness. And then like blue balling him, maybe. I don't know. He hates me because his ah. balls are so full now and I didn't help. I'm sorry. I can't do that. I didn't help drain them. <laughs> Yikes. She didn't confess to see the, the, those balls drained. Confussy. Con, confussy. She did, when she woke up though, mm -hmm. um, she did say that she felt embarrassed despite sleeping on him bare chested all night. And that also is very Adam and Eve. Oh, gosh, yeah. That's she so ate the true. apple and she woke up naked and felt embarrassed. And she's going to be embarrassed about getting naked again later. Crazy, yeah. But I yeah. wonder if, do you think that ties in? Probably. Wait, we're doing it again. We do everything in duplicates. What? Like what? Everything. Every single thing we've done so far so happens like, twice. <laughs> kind of. So, that is a thing. We go through the underworld, we go back in, we go back out again. We go, Like, why are we... Kaylin gets naked... In gets the spirit house, gets embarrassed. Gets naked again in the spirit That's house, weird. gets embarrassed. Yeah. It does feel intentional, but like, I don't like it. No. I, why are we doing it like that? It's a, I like. Is it a measure twice, cut once reference? <laughs> like, what are we doing? I like things that are really like. Correct and tight. concise and tight. I like yeah. concise and tight and this is really not that. No. This is like, did you get it? We're going back. <sighs> did you get it now? I think if you want to fuck around like that, you have to. Hold it for the right moment to keep Correct. it impactful. I agree. Yeah. So like doing it repeatedly is kind of like. Yeah. Right. So they have like a little flashback, right? Where she wakes up and I guess she's embarrassed because she's Eve in the garden. Mm. And like, oh, my nakedness. And first she says, like, thanks for being so patient with me last night. Mm -hmm. I wish I could return the favor. And he's like, I mean, you dedicated your entire life to defending me. Like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. True. Um, except for the part where maybe she'll kill you. Uh, you, you don't know. know that yet, but yeah. No, he doesn't know that. And then Richard, with his little joke. Which one? He says, I have to admit, though, I'll never look at apples the same way. Oh, now. my God. Hmm. What'd you think of that? I didn't I, think much of that. <laughs> I'll never look at an apple in quite the same way. And then they, like, crack up. Oh, my God. It's so corny. It's, it's like, kind of, it, it's cute. It's oh. cute. But it's corny. It's corny and cute. Richard, they're they're Richard a little is corny. corny and cute. Yeah, they are. Together, they're corny. Yeah, even Birdman's like cringing. <laughs> the spirits are cringing. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Frank the other day was like, you know what? Was it kind of fucked up that they 
had sex in the spirit house and i was like like wasn't that like doing it in church and i was like you know what? maybe that's true. they didn't ask i know and that could have like okay that could so have just been a plot point i would have went along with it if yeah. like the spirits came and they were like we saw you last because the spirits were on their way yeah they're already that night around. at the bank so if they were like we saw you fucking in here what's wrong with you two yeah that could have fucked up the whole thing it could have or they could have just been like very like cool that's what this is for. Well, maybe they like it. Richard comments, oh, it appears there's a big shaft of light. Do you think that means anything? And then they're like, no, <sighs> maybe. no, as no. they're walking. Do you think, hmm, Whatever. reader, it meant something. <laughs> so they go back into town. Banquet's still happening. And Banquet's that I found, raging. I found that shocking. I was like, we're still going? It's sunset again, and people are still dancing. They're still They're eating, they're party. feasting. I want to go to this sort of thing. See, we were harsh on them for hanging out with the mud people for so long. But yeah. now, if you think about it... They party hard. Maybe you would stay, too. I would have stayed. So they come back into town. The elders are still on their little platform from the night before. They're eating a special meal. And they are drinking a weird red drink mm. that Kaylin remarks upon. Yep, being looks like, so oh, weird. She's basically like, they're fucked up right now. Yep, and like, their eyes are they with are the spirits tripping. already. Yep. They're tripping, and yeah, the the ancestors were with them at that mm -hmm. moment. They were. I want some of that. <laughs> do you think it's like uh, Mountain Dew Code Red? Like, what do you? Th <laughs> it just fucks them up. So you just never had anything. <laughs> it's that like that sense. joke with the eat, like feeding a Victorian child. Like <laughs> one chalupa would kill them. <laughs> It's just like, they get Mountain Dew and they're like, whoa! <laughs> they were seeing spirits! You they were, were having a Doritos, Locos Tacos. Uh, can I have the human meat chalupa? <laughs> Honestly, Taco Bell, if you want to sponsor us too. Uh, Great shout out. Boom! He did the bell. He should have. Should have stuck with the soundboard. Oh, man. You dropped Remember the, that? We dropped the soundboard. We totally dropped... <laughs> we dropped so many things. We dropped soundboard. We dropped the we riz dropped? points. Oh my we god! We dropped. Um, no, the, people have not been rizzing really. So we dropped the belt bit. <sighs> We've dropped a lot. Wow. I felt like I was getting too much with the belt. That's why I gave it a break. It's gonna be sick when it comes back. <laughs> is it even in the room? I don't know. Yeah, it is. It's right, it's right there. there. <laughs> So Birdman tells Kaylin it's time for Richard to go to the spirit gathering. And she can't come because women are not allowed. <laughs> and uh, they kind of like go back and forth. And she's like, and I have to go because I'm his translator and These people such and can't such. keep pretending like... First off, spirits could probably speak any language, right? I thought that too. I but maybe but, not yeah, because the they, way they manifest, speak yeah. through the elders. That's true. Perhaps no. He obviously just doesn't want her to go in general because of the gender thing. But then it feels like the main point of contention ends up being that he like whispers to her, when we meet the spirits, it must be as they are. Naked. And she's like, are you trying to tell me that I can't wear clothes? And he's yeah. like, and, and. <laughs> you have to be painted with mud, which I'm like, yeah, okay. And then she says, fine, I have no objections, respect. And then he says, what about this seeker? Maybe you'd like to ask him, ask him how he feels about this, which, okay, I'm like. It's not a parallel. It's it so not, not a parallel. It does not, it's not the same thing. What the fuck are you, how is this the example uh, that I we're giving? Because I think he's implying that the Birdman thinks that Richard Will care. would disallow it. Which is the same thing to the Birdman. You didn't ask him his permission, which is his right to deny you entry. Like you didn't ask about that. But it's like, Richard okay. don't care. These are not the same to me. They're not the same. So what I found confusing. So Kaylin agrees to ask Richard, right? Yeah, okay, all right. We'll tell him this time. <laughs> so we'll we'll, we'll give him a heads up. But... The whole, like, beginning of her explanation has absolutely nothing to do with her being naked. No, it's her being manipulative. Right. 100%. Well, okay. I But my thought was, it's like her basically trying to be like, Richard, you better, once I get to the part where I come in naked, yeah. you better say yes. This was the part where I was like, you can't be seriously telling me this is when you're going to tell him all this shit. And you yeah. guys were doing bird whistles instead of talking about this. But anyway, also her front loading the is it okay if I'm naked request with all of this makes me think that she is in some part of her thinks Richard's going to say no without this 
like convincing. Yeah, I, and I'm like, I don't think he would say no I don't think to so begin either. with. So I don't get why this is how it's presented. You're going to. OK, so like you like a girl. Yeah. And you're like, she's cute. And we just fooled around a little bit last night. Mm-hmm. And then the next day she's like, we could all die if you don't allow me to come in there naked. And like he's going to be like, like, no, I don't want to see those tits again. I saw them last night. No way. Ew, your right. body is, I, I've just seen it. I don't need to see it again. Literally, I was like, why are you ex- Why are you giving him all this explanation of like, it'll be really, really bad if I don't do the thing I'm going to ask you if I could do, and here's all the bad reasons. It'll go wrong. Like, I was like, I don't think he even needs that. I don't he think he needs that. He doesn't need it. He knows. Today. I cannot speak to these people without you, and yeah, so you'll she's be like, naked. Cool. She's like, hey, Richard. <laughs> Let me tell you now, it's like right before we're walking in. But just so you know, <laughs> if the spirits don't like what you say, they will kill you. Um, and and then Richard's like, well, I'll have my sword. She's like, actually, I'm going to tell you right now. No, you won't. No sword for you, Richard. You can't bring that in. And um, if I'm not translating, I'm really concerned that you won't understand what the fuck they're saying. And you'll say the wrong thing. And you'll piss them off. And then Which you'll die. would have happened. So is it okay if I'm naked? <laughs> like, yeah. What? Okay. First of all, in a situation, I'm really, okay, me and you. Yeah. Uh, I guess we're not married. We just met. Me and you? But okay. it's uh, us. All right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And the. <laughs> okay. okay. That's what we do? Well, we just met. We're, okay. We're, we're a little nervous about holding hands. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. And uh-huh. <laughs> he's still holding my hand. And. It's cold. <laughs> I know. It's cold in the house. Anyway. So the world's ending. Yeah. We're going to go to the spirit gathering. Uh-huh. I am aware of how this goes down. I'm aware that you can't bring your weapons. Scary. I'm aware that you're going to need a translator. Oh, I'm man. aware I, I that am. the spirits frequently murder people and they Whoa, don't like their oh, answers. I wish I had a day to prepare about all this. Okay. <laughs> Morning of. We're yeah. going to do it tonight. Uh-huh. Somehow I still haven't told you this leading up to it because uh, we've had multiple days where we knew that was our goal. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's the day of. Okay. I'm picturing we're like me and you finding a nice little spot in the village, in the maybe out in the plains, just somewhere. We're going somewhere where I'm like, all right, we're gonna talk. Let's strategize. Here's yeah. here's how you're gonna listen. Fucking D and D players strategize what questions they're going to ask spirits and gods and just kings. Better than this. Better than this. Yeah. For like a game. A game. Yeah. Okay, that was my rant. Cool. What do you think? Yeah, do you agree? absolutely. I don't know. This this girl can't foresight at all. <laughs> she has like zero. It's like she's in the scenario. I'm like, all right, so, you know, here's the rules. I uh, hope you don't die. It's my job to protect you, by the way. <laughs> girl, the only, what, do you, what else are you thinking about? The only thing I will, I will protect you. Just like no forethought, no planning. We're just going to run in. Uh, and then if something happens, I will blast them away. That's about all I can provide for That's you. It. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna zap them if they get close to you. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, things are gonna get, try and get close to you, <laughs> and I'll probably die. Jesus, and yeah, then, she's on a suicide mission every day. I know. She's like, I'll take the bullet. What bullet? Richard's like, What do you mean? They're shooting? Oh yeah, by the way, there's a hundred archers. <laughs> Like, what are you doing? Like, stop just being willing to die in these drastic... And, and instead plan a little. Yeah, like, let's just stop this scenario from happening in the first place, and then maybe you won't be, like, throwing your fucking body this in front of This is the ADHD Richard. confessor's, like, dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's like, I can't plan. I can't plan. He was playing with the bird whistle. It was so cool. <laughs> I was cracking I I, up. When I woke up, I was like, I'll probably tell him all about it. But then I was like, he was having so much fun and it was hilarious, you know? So, so Richard don't give a fuck. What's Richard's little joke? Oh, he had a good joke. I thought you would like it. I wrote it down. Verbatim. I think you are bound and determined one way or another to have your clothes off in the spirit house. That actually was kind of funny. That's Riz. Give him a point. Yes, oh, we're bringing it back. Riz point. is Who is winning right now? Rich Is Richard neck and neck with Zed? <laughs> yeah, only because Zed hasn't been here in like 12 I know. chapters. I know, it's getting unfair because I'm like, yeah, Richard's always going to have more points because he's just going to do more. And he still might lose. He still might. That's true. It's not even... I don't think he's going to be rizzing the uh, Mord Sith too much. But maybe They're going to get the Riz points. Maybe. We'll see. 
We'll see. That was a lot funnier than I'll never look at an apple the same way this yeah, joke was yeah. superior. So Kaylin says she's nervous about being naked. I went back and forth on this. Like, I'm like... Uh, Once again, I, I'll do anything for the fate of the world, but I won't do that. Right, you're like, okay, the human meat, I'll even... I can understand more than being like, I have to be naked in front of a couple of old men who have been nothing but like... Fatherly yeah, and kind like, to me it's just like, and are already like high on the juice. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, whatever. Literally, like... Okay, I don't uh, think it's that big of a deal. It's not. But, yeah, Erica said in the comments on the last episode that, like, Caitlin acts like she was raised in, like, purity culture. And it's true. That is how she's characterized, as if she was, like, raised in some, like, fundamentalist Puritan oh, yeah. environment. That's the, that's and the... so I question, is that, like, when I learn more about confessors... confessors is that going to be the... Is that part of it? I mean, they are, I guess, always dressed in their little white garb, like... I do think that's intentional. Okay, yeah. so maybe maybe she does have this like inner. But why is she so good at being body in the bar? Because she talks to rapists all the time. But then. I know. I don't know. It doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really make sense. Why is she full palm ass grabbing? Yeah. Richard? What on earth? I keep thinking back to that and be like, that is so very not in line with the this characterization girl. at this point i know like they have nothing in common bring her back bring her back now <laughs> yeah where is that caleb well you know what it is though it's like when you get a midlands girl in the westlands they don't know how to act they start acting up is that what it is that's what it is yeah. i don't know what happened i'm just saying the caleb who was like worldly enough to make the joke he's my whore and slap his ass <laughs> is the same girl who's like a couple of old men need me naked in a pitch black room for a spirit ritual i'm freaking out Dude, that one's just so much more real you know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know that doesn't work for me i don't know either well maybe because it wasn't from her perspective maybe she was freaking out while she was palming his butt what do you think her internal monologue was like? Oh my god! Well, butt. exactly, because I'm so like round. this internal monologue I've been getting. Yeah, in that moment, she should have been like, and then I was shaking because my hand touched his butt. Like I, I put on my confessor's hand and full palm the seeker's bo- booty. Why do I always make up a new butt? <laughs> yeah, so they tell Birdman, "Go fuck yourself and your traditions." Where she's coming, and he goes, "Yeah, fuck me. I guess you've all you've done since you've been here has pissed me off, but all right." They do have good reason to be annoying, but you know. <laughs> yeah, the fate of the world. Why? Okay, so we're going to like go into the spirit gathering. Oh. Why did we bother from a writing perspective? There's so many things that like what you're about to describe. <laughs> I know you're but right, but ahead. I'm starting with the stupidest, most immediate one. Uh-huh. Why did we bother doing this thing where they went into another... Don't know. <laughs> another building. No clue. Sat there. And waited then... for their turn. And then... <laughs> And then one person comes and gets one of them, and then one person... And we're not building any tension. We're just doing it. But I was just like, this seems so arbitrary and random. It doesn't feel like it has any meaning. It's not building tension. It's doing nothing for me other than just annoying me. It's like like describing waiting at the DMV, (laughs) but like none of the emotions matter. No, but it's like making that up when that's not a thing. Exactly. I don't know. For no reason. Well, there's a ritual here, and it's really boring. (laughs) That was what Terry decided to do. Like, we could have just went right in. It added literally nothing birdman says here sit here hold your clay pot i'm gonna go away <laughs> they wait with the clay pots richard gets called he goes kaylin sits around for a little bit and thinks about how she's gonna get called then she gets called <laughs> no, then... yeah they go in the one room all the elders there birdman's like i'm gonna call you all one by one cool you're like sick okay they're not in the spirit house they're next door <laughs> so like, that, it was confusing me it was, it was so, so mundane it was, I was like, so confusing i was like, I was like where are, they, are, they? are they across the town like where i don't know oh they're next door why are they okay yeah so then i was just uh. confused because Kate, okay uh, they keep going seeming to go back and forth where it's like birdman's like you can't come because you're a woman they're not allowed then it feels like she's allowed in essentially on the technicality that she is there as his translator which makes sense because yes. you're like technically fine you got to do the ritual but you're not really a part of it you're like his sidekick yeah but then they're treating her like she very much so is a part of she's it. she's a part of the ritual 100%. because richard gets 
and then they call Richard into the room before Caitlin. And yep. I'm like, well, now this defeats the whole purpose. She's supposed to be there to protect him mm-hmm. the whole time. And she's supposed to be translating. So why even separate them in the first place? I don't know. I, I feel mean, like that would be something they'd both be like, no. But in this case, they're like, okay. It's fine. They wouldn't lie to us. And like, I'm like, what if the dude just started the ritual without you in That's there? That's what I'm saying. Like, I was like, why were they so chill about that? And we get the the dethroning, the, the, the derobing scene and the, the, the description about how the robes are all going to be put in the town square to let everyone know that the robes are there because we're in the meeting. And then when we're out of the meeting, they'll bring the robes back. Shut up. Well, it's like vaguely relevant. We could have just, we could have gotten it across. First of all. 300 less it, words. It, there's two steps here. There's like. Did I need an explanation at all to begin with? Not really. You could have gotten it across to me just via actions. That's what I mean. Second of all, even if for whatever goddamn reason you need to explain it, you still are explaining it too long. Yes. So it's like, I didn't, yeah, I didn't need it explained whatsoever. But if you were going to do it, why like that? I don't know. Couldn't so yeah, Kaylin comes out. Birdman's sitting on like a bench outside of the spirit house. It's nighttime. It's dark. He's naked. He's got his mud symbols painted on him. Swirled up. And then there's like a guy, like one of the hunters, is there, and kill it immediately. Like, who's he? What's he here for? Which I'm like, there could be so many reasons he's here. Uh, like, he's guarding the door. Kaylin. Literally, like, what, like I just don't and even, he literally kind of is. Who so would I don't know. notice? Like, who's no? She's like, make him turn around. Oh my god. Like, oh my god. If you're committing, just commit. Like, oh, uh, Joby, I didn't even know you were here. Are you trying to take a peek at the confessor's boobs? Like, what? no, he's doing so. He's working, Kaylin. Relax. A bird man says a nice thing. He says, tonight, you are neither man nor woman. You are a mud person. Tonight, I am neither man nor woman. I am a spirit guide. Which, like, yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't think she should be that stressed about it. Yeah, I agree. We're so not then... in a circumstance where, like, we don't know these people. It's weird. You're kind of like, ooh, are they, like, trying to take advantage of me? Like, I feel like oh, clearly no. No. I agree. They clearly take this very seriously. But now we get this kind of annoying thing, right? Where it's like, all right, so Caitlin's a little nervous and he makes her feel better with that line. Yeah. And then she derobes and he's now a little nervous to touch her. Well, I kind of see Which makes that. sense in two ways. Yeah. One, because right. she's a pretty young woman that he's not supposed to be initiating into this ritual Correct. and he's doing it for the first time in yeah, his life. Yeah, that makes sense. And two, her body kills people. Yeah. So... But to yeah. be fair, they've been, like, touching a lot. I get that. So now, why does Kaylin get an attitude? I think... I don't know why I'm going to defend this. I don't know why either. Let's hear it. <laughs> My defense of this one part is, I think... You know when you're, like, nervous about something yeah. and you really... You're, like, building up your courage and you want the other person to just keep pushing you forward? Mm. It, I think she's annoyed because she's kind of like, I'm so nervous. I don't want to, um, I don't want to comfort you. Hmm. I'm more nervous than you, I think is how she feels about it. Yeah, which feels kind of rude when you were just nervous and he comforted you. You know what I mean? But he's supposed to be the expert, so I guess it's Yeah, like, like he's the, he just said, I'm the you're spirit You're the spirit guide, guide so. Touch, so guide me. So. Don't make me so like. rub that mud on my midriff. <laughs> yeah, so she gets her symbols on her. She walks into the spirit house, finally. Finally, we're in. We got skulls in the center of the room. Yep. We have a fire that smells acrid, so you're like, oh, something's in there. Okay. (laughs) Something's in there. Birdman comes in. He says they cannot leave. It closes the door. Actually, no. It says that the door closed on its own. On its own. own. So the spirits closed the door. Yeah. (laughs) Birdman says they cannot leave until they're finished around dawn. Yep. The spirits are blocking the door. So then our big moment comes. Yes, finally. They start passing around a basket. Yep. Frogs are in the basket. I don't know why. I very distinctly remember this part. Yeah. I, don't know. I do because I don't know why something really creeps me out. Oh, I know why. About. The way it felt. It's something about the frogs having this like chemical on their back really yeah, some freaks sort of me out. Neurotoxin rubbing it into your chest, yeah, that, your heart. Yeah, that's kind of a lot. I don't know why that's like made me feel like Ugh, at the time. Did you feel woozy when you read it? Yeah, yeah I knew you would. Yeah. I still do. I don't like it. Um, and then 
I remember that was the first time I ever heard of that concept and that I remember in my life coming across the fact that that's real and going like, oh my God, Richard and Kaylin did that. That was my point of reference. <laughs> and, and they did. Distinctly remember this. Um, they call them spirit frogs. That's they do. It's... Rub my back. What? What does that mean? Now you're getting fucked up. <laughs> Only rub your back. Okay. All right. And... <laughs> yeah. They're taking the frogs. They're rubbing it on their chest. Yep. Um, but before Kaylin does that, she's like, hey, Birdman, I can't take drugs because... Why are you doing that? I'm a high frog. Oh. <laughs> I don't want this. Anyway, uh, Birdman, I can't... <laughs> Okay. Birdman, I can't take drugs because I won't be in control of my confessor power anymore. And Birdman says, tough shit, little girl. Literally. Yeah. He was You're like, in the spirit house now. Well, he was like, I guess, and maybe this is true, he was like, you will die if you don't take the frogs. He's like, yeah, you're going to die if you don't take the frogs, and if one of us dies, so be it. Yeah, he was okay with the sacrifice of maybe her power exploding into one person. Yeah. Um, so it was either that was going to happen or she was going to die. Someone's dying. Or maybe not, because if you take it and you can control your powers, cool. great. Then maybe you save the so world. So try it yeah. out. Um, and she does. I don't know. He starts describing a very, like, typical, like, druggy experience. Yeah, yeah. The room's the... spinning. Things are lighting up. Everybody starts holding hands in a circle. We do get the juxtaposition of comparison between dark rituals. Dark and Rawls dark ritual and this this dark ritual. Why are you saying this is a dark ritual? It just contacting the dead and using the skulls and the acrid smoke. Mm, I but I don't know. I wouldn't label this dark. It's their ancestors. They seem to have like a very nice relationship with the them. ghosts. Come and the ghosts have their you own until you admit well, hard truths and then maybe kill you if they don't like you. So it feels like. Mm, but that's no that's dark. the difference because i would say it's not dark because dark and raw is trying to control mm -hmm. and not respect the power of those things that's fair and here clearly the spirits are the ones who have the power the power over uh, the humans so we're just well, so okay so what i meant is death ritual ghost yeah. underworld, underworld related ritual okay yeah that rolls off the <laughs> <laughs> Underworld focused uh, magical <laughs> gathering of yeah, yeah, yeah. sorcerers slash elders. Who is an elder with DR? DR. He's the father. <laughs> father Raw. Father Raw. <laughs> Shadow things are back. Kind of. Not kind really. of. Not really. That's really all I can say about it. That's all. For a, for a moment, Kaylin has a panic attack and she thinks that when. The trip finally resolves. She starts seeing all these swirling things. And she's like, it's the shadow things. They're back. I need to kill them. I need to protect Richard. I'm diving on the president. And then it's just, oh, they're not actually shadow things. The, what was these the, are honored elders. What was the reason she realized they that? They have faces. Shadow things don't have faces. Right. So now I'm like. Did Richard kill his dad? <laughs> I don't know. Did he kill his shade for real? It's very unclear yeah. what the rules are. Because that one had are. a face. Yeah, uh-huh. But also, I'm like, okay, but she thought they were shadow things immediately, so justice for Toblerone, because oh, clearly yeah, they look alike. They look just the same. <laughs> clearly they look very similar, okay? Yeah, so now cutting through Honored Elders is kind of like... Okay, so fuck you. Maybe. Everybody else. Yeah. Poor Toblerone was just worried Grandpapa was getting taken out by the Sword of Truth. But then Birdman... And all of them would have seen them too, and they didn't react. So why was this bad? So foolable. Maybe he had cataracts. Couldn't see the faces. I don't think it's that. I think he just saw the shape and was like, "Yeah, he was that's like, what spirits. That's what spirits, that's spirits look spirits. like." Come on. Yeah. Well, whatever. But yeah, what is the difference materially? Because both are like we have the ancestors coming, who are clearly you know ghosts, must yeah. be related Wispy to the underworld. Shadow ghosts uh -huh. look similar to the shadow things. The shadow things are also spirits from the underworld. Like, what is the difference? I'm sure we'll get an overall explanation at some point. If not, it's just going to be like generalized shadow energy versus 
materially called on Shadow Source. I don't know. And Zed's over here summoning his full-bodied parents. Yeah, so right. They. Please. What's with this power? I wonder if it's related. Zed, why can't you help more? Well, it does seem you have to go on an acid trip to yes, hundred percent to access to these people. spirits at all. Well, unless lest you have lest. the Nightstone, not then you. Don't. Sure, then you could just take it out and That's the be hack. swarmed by them. Yeah. Um, I did also note in the in the comparison of the rituals, cannibalism did happen in both instances. Oh, true. Which I thought was interesting. Oh, weird. Yeah. Hmm. It was Zed no, didn't do cannibalism as far as we know. As far as we know. To talk to his yeah. parents. I feel like wizards have weird hacks. Yeah, you know? maybe. Maybe I mean, this Rawl's is okay. Too, maybe but... this is for the non-wizards. Maybe. Too. But right, yeah. If Darkin is a wizard, then... but he's going to the underworld. That's a whole it's other level. Different. Yeah. Yeah. So the ancestors basically like speak through the elders, but like and it's initially they're all like shadowy figures. Yeah. They're like walking around, um, and when they want to talk, they see they talk first through the bird man. But this yes. at this point there are still the spirits like in the room, um, and they ask who called the meeting. Kaylin's like he did. Yeah. <laughs> to Richard. Oh, it's just my friend right he here. Did. And they, the spirits are like, everybody don't hold his hand anymore. And then they all like... Zoom through him. They just run like, their ghost bodies through him and yeah. Richard's screaming. Yeah. You're like, oh boy. And Kaylin wants to help, but I don't know what you were going to do. Nothing really. Yeah, you get the sense, I guess, that they're trying to like take in Richard's essence. Yes. The theme yeah, yeah, of this yeah, whole thing is them deciding... If they like or trust Richard enough to give him information. So that's how I took that. Yeah. Yeah. They were like measuring him. Caitlin like jumps up because they're all like swarming Richard. And then Richard's like, I'm good. I'm good. And she sits down. And then the spirits basically like pick an elder and like go yeah. into their body. Start, and, yeah. And piloting them. the elder bodies. Yes. And then you get that classic cool uh, dual speak. So, okay. Here we go. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to do it. The way the ancestors talk sucks. I don't want to do it. They're literally like AI bots. It's like... just, it's, uh, what did I write? It's, they talk like, um, you go. <laughs> what do you want? I just thought they were, it was not giving spirit. That's for sure. No, it's like everyone else so far. It's like anyone yeah. that interfaces with Richard is just like a Play-Doh analog sitting in his cave being like, well, but why did you do the thing that you did the way that you did it, Seeker? And he's like, why is that question relevant? And they're like, of course it is relevant. You must answer these seven questions. Does it give you, like, okay, so far we kept being like, am I just not intelligent enough to, like, get some of these conversations? That's or, not it. I really am, like, this just feels like somebody who's, like, really trying to be smart being very pedantic it's and you're like yeah. i don't think this is intelligent the way you think no. it's intelligent it, it's not i don't think it's as clever as nope it wants to be it's not it's just rhetoric it it's just, is it's so it's lame. just dry it's boring so... predictable rhetoric over and over again to try and get to a like a truth which i get that's the point of the whole fucking book. But you could have done it a little bit better than this. Brandon some... Sanderson oh handles wow. divine mystery so much better than Terry Goodkind. It's the Mormonism. It's got to be. He respects the unknown. Yeah. Terry does not respect the unknown. I think I read... He calls them shadow things. Yeah, and true. then he has these dumbass ghosts come in here and ask him the same fucking questions that the bone woman asked him, that everyone's been asking this guy. Oh, yeah, but why it's like, did you kill? It's such a unique way of thinking that it is odd to have it pop up in so many different instances. You're like, this is a really specific way to yeah. think about things, question things, and I don't believe that everyone they in don't. this area they thinks They do like not. This. You're just like, oh, smart people think like this. And they all sound the same when they're talking. Yeah. No, it's like, you, it's like, yeah, you're writing a like, fictional professor at an Ivy League school, and they all talk like this. Yeah, and I it's want... it's not smart. It's not good. I want my Ugh. spirits to feel a certain way. I really don't know what the words are. That's exactly... Uh, literally, the spirits don't sound like spirits. Not and, at and all. And that is horrible. It, like I said, it sounds like an AI bot. Like, it feels like I if I was, like, 
This should be like in a sci-fi novel. Correct. Where you like go to the like hyper computer. You're talking to like the logic machine. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, well. I guess you could try to say and like. He is. Oh, when you have like all the knowledge of the world, this is like how you think. You could think that way and have more poetry in how you talk. One hundred percent, and also like, I think you'd be smarter than this. Yes, <laughs> like, because you would have more poetry in how you talk. Even if you're gonna go, maybe you no, but even if you're gonna go like, oh, you turn logic brain because you're like in the geometry of the universe. Sure, you'd sound much smarter. That's all I'm gonna say. You sound like a smart robot. You sound like dumb, dumb robots. Correct. Yeah. So, I know. Anyway, I guess we should talk about what it is anyway. I guess. So, he's like, the spirits, why did you call this meeting? Okay. I must find an object of magic before Dark and Raw finds it, before he can use it. First of all, everything, Richard approaches this horribly, I fucking hate these spirits, they're annoying as fuck. And then, Richard. Do you also hate the Seeker? <laughs> yeah, the Richard's attempt to converse with them is also so bad so annoying so bad so poorly planned again if i think him and kayla needed to do a, a, little, a little a little workshop you they think, needed to they role play yeah. how this conversation was about to go yeah. down because he's not prepared yeah well she wouldn't know she'd never been inside it doesn't matter she clearly had information she had some info she yeah. had information she did um how'd she know that the spirits kill people how'd she know that he can't bring weapons how'd she she knew something she did she did. So, okay. I must find an object of magic before Dark Knight Roll finds it. I would start broader. Yep. I would start with, there's a man named Dark and Brawl. Pretty sure he wants to kill the whole world. I would like to do a specific thing to prevent that. Like, start with your thesis, sir. What's the thesis statement here? Saving the world. Not just, I want a magic object. Okay, yeah, but Why? And then they ask him that, but it's like, you could assume that they would want to know that. And my first gripe immediately, because later in the conversation, once they hear what he's after, uh -huh. they start freaking out and like, oh, our programming does not allow <laughs> for us to uh, cannot compute. But when they say his name, Dark and Raw, it should be like attached to that file. No shit. And they're like... Oh, that guy? We can't tell you about that guy. Literally. Like, okay, again, you're trying to be like, oh, genius robots hijacked into the universal consciousness. Yeah, they could figure that out. <laughs> they could figure wait, that out. Wait, the magic... Oh, wait. Are you, are you asking what? about... Oh, Dark Knight Raw put the boxes of Orton in play? And we can't talk oh, about that? that? We're forbidden from talking about... Huh. Hmm. I wonder if that's what he's going to ask about. No. They were, they were like, oh, he wanted the stick of foresight. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe in the background, like, Tobariki Right, like, how like, much information do they have? They seem to have tons of information, but then they all seem to be like, he's doing what now? He's trying to end the world? Well, why wouldn't you know that? Uh, of course, you know exactly where he is, who he's hanging out with, where the boxes are. Are you not listening? What do you not understand? I, I don't know what they don't understand, but it's a lot. The fr so then, he, okay, so he says he wants to find a magical object because of Dark and all. And they're like, why? They're, no, oh. that's not what they say. They say, I'm how sorry. many men have you killed? Which, like, oh, God. <sighs> yeah, then this just becomes a stating of intention versus a stating of want we and need and yeah. want and desire. And it's just like, uh, this is not what the ghost... The ghost should walk through and be like, we saw, see what kind of person you are. Literally. What did they learn when they walked through him? I don't know. What was the point? They Just to hurt him? <laughs> they just want to ping him for some damage before they know. start? How? Well, we start all our interrogations like this. Squeeze, they're just squeezing his balls on the way through a little bit. Like, oh, this guy's got blue balls. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, we know why. We were here. We saw it. Ha, ha, ha. Look, I can't believe she got naked in here. <laughs> Yo, this is a tits from last night. Oh, my God. Squeeze those balls. <laughs> like, what? Okay. Anyway. How many men have you killed? Richard says two. They say why. For a while, I was like, isn't it one? Like, when did he kill two people? Wait. <laughs> right? That's what I did. He does the one. Well, he kills the guy for Kaylin. Mm -hmm. Who's the other guy? I, I know, because I thought about it for a while. Who's the other guy? In the very beginning, he pushes him off the cliff. <laughs> They made such a big deal about that being his first kill with Caitlyn, but I guess they just met with the with sword. With the sword, right. yeah. Well, I know. I think that's what threw me. 
Um, okay, why did you kill them? To keep them from killing me. And then they said both of them. Is oh, that why you killed uh-huh. both of them? Um, first one I killed in self-defense. The second one I killed in defense of a friend. They say, do you think the defense of a friend gives you the right to kill? He says, yes. Yeah. He Suppose he was going to kill your friend to defend the life of a friend. Oh, whoa, big brain. Whoa. Well, then I guess it really just depends on who kills who, right? It depends on a lot of things, I would say. The intent could go flying. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want to talk about any possible scenario in which I might kill? And and the answer is yes. That's what they want to talk about. Was he... Suppose he was going to kill your friend to defend the life of a friend. Granted, are these spirits annoying? Yeah. For sure. But then Richard's reply is, what is the point? What is the point of the question? Do not question these spirits right now. Just do what you gotta do, man. Like, Suck what? it the fuck up. I don't even understand. I'll, listen. He, why if, are you hurting my feelings right now? Dude, the I world's guess he's, gonna end. I guess he's high. Yeah, he's high as fuck. That's but true. still, no, still, still, it's bad form. He's got blue balls. He drank the red Gatorade. And now he's getting emotionally devastated by these ghosts. We haven't done much yet. They're acting like, okay, I feel like Caitlin even later reacts to this as if, like, Richard is getting, like, lambasted and Uh, every horrible thing is being brought up. I'm like, they're going, it's not that deep. No, it's really not. Like, he he should be able to handle this. Who can't handle this line of questioning? That's what I'm saying. He's fine. The, he should be the fine. point is that the the line of questioning is so fucking boring yeah. that I don't understand why he's getting this worked up about it, other than just to be like, "This is annoying." Just suck it up. I mean, you worked so hard. You should be you should be sucking these spirits' dicks right now. Like, I mean, you worked so hard. <laughs> what did he have to get here? Yo, he needs to just get in the mud. <laughs> Get on his knees and just do what they say. He should be sloshing in the spirit house. Wow. Yeah, the spirit house doesn't no. seem to get us to the end results. No. You only get beginnings. So that's why it feels especially egregious to have spent so much time here. We don't even get an answer. We get another quest line. But I am excited for that. Oh, yes! Okay. She's got two big res points coming her way already. What is the point of the question? Girl, who cares? Just answer it. Who cares? Answer it. Fucking Um, shut up. According to what you believe, you think it is justified to kill in the defense of a friend. Then if he was killing to defend a friend, he had the right to kill your friend. Like, was Terry sitting around (laughs) being like, it's going to be like a court interrogation with ghosts. They're going to think- sit around and be like like ghost lawyers being like, according to the defense. <laughs> but like, I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I think we got that that's what the line, that's what you were asking initially. I didn't need it spelled out like that. Um, I guess I didn't. Hi- I think I probably thought this was clever in high school. Yeah, same. I, I don't remember having any problems with this. And it's hard because I'm like, I guess if I like knew that Terry was like, I wrote this for a younger crowd, I would be like, oh, okay. I could understand making intentional choices to yeah, um, cater. It was more just like it was interesting to think like you were like, oh, I never thought of that. But it's weird because it's like, yeah. a, this is like hella adult. And I think a lot of adults read it. And I just for adults, I. Yes. I would like to think we've all explored by the time we're this age, like moral questions like this, but a lot of people haven't. Maybe they haven't. And they don't like them and that. Well, why? Yeah. But I then just... why read this book? This book's all about moral questions at this point. This sort of thing with the consistent narrator of the people challenging the seeker, it works almost better as like a parable. Or like a short story mm. where like the voice coming out of multiple different like wise people all sounds the same. Yeah. And it's this like rhetorical like device run through like a fairy tale filter. Mm-hmm. But this is too no, long. I know. And it's doing too many genre things at once. Like the same way you're like they're trying to put too many ages into one, one character. Ca- yes. It's like you're trying to do it can't have that 
succinct parable feeling while also being like oh but they're also like grounded characters that you need to relate yes, to as exactly. human to human and also like dragons and also like I, there's too many we, we just opened the whole bag and dumped out whatever we wanted and i need you together. i want you to be really good at the one or two things you're trying to do think about Earthsea mm. and how like fucking good that yeah, was it's... how many elements it combined but it was still like consistent the whole way through and it's like it's thing yeah this is like a trillion things and it's not consistent i don't even hate what we're trying to do with the idea of the seeker and the sword of truth no no profe- i like the idea that's why but i think the around. execution yeah just a lot of these things keep happening since you think killing to defend a friend is okay and maybe that person was killing to defend a friend then you should think that you were wrong to kill them because they were right that's the correct right okay yeah and yeah then richard yeah he says not all questions have answers i was like that's not a bad response and the spirit should know that. I, I guess know. they want to know that he knows that. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe not all questions have answers you like. And then Richard says, maybe, and that he's getting angry. But again, like, my dude can't keep his fucking cool. But I guess it's the sword magic. He doesn't have a sword right he now. He doesn't have it But right maybe now. it's, like, been infused in his soul. That's, that's the point, you know. yeah. Because he killed with it. So he's getting pissed. They say, did you enjoy killing this man? Which one? The first man? No. The second man? What is the point of these questions? Shut up, Richard. Mm. Answer only if you tell me the reason. Like Richard's saying, only if you tell me the reason you're asking. They're not going to tell you. And they keep saying, like, we're not here to bargain with you. I know. You You called us. And I don't care about your little deals. He keeps trying to, like, appeal to them. I know. Like, oh, you tell me this, I'll tell you that. And it's like, shut the fuck up. They're spirits. I want nothing from you. I can't get it anyway. And and like, maybe this is some part of a like, to break him down sort of a thing. Like, this is like. If you wanted to get across to me that Richard was getting like, his ego broken, which evidently we're going to. Evidently the Mord Sith will be better at accomplishing that goal than spirits from the other side which doesn't really sit well with me that doesn't make sense ladies causing physical pain is more emotionally racking than like ghosts from beyond if the ghosts wanted to break him down i think that they'd be great at it and i'd like to see it happen it wouldn't be them just sort of asking him irritating philosophical questions it would be like going for his fucking like I don't know what the dark part of his psyche. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. And shit. Yeah. I don't know. We're just bringing up like the most fucked memories. We're trying uh-huh. to make him feel guilty about his dad. Like just anything yeah, else. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of shit, <laughs> which is like way more in line. The spirits say, "You came here to ask us questions. Shall we? Shall we ask your reasons?" And then Richard says, "It would seem you are. Answer our questions, or we will not answer yours." And if I answer it, you promise you'll answer mine? No. And then they're like, we're not here to make bargains. You called us. Answer the question or the gathering is over. It's like, yeah, they hold pretty much all the power You here. came to them for help. You can't then be like, all right, so what are you going to give me if I give you this? Well, it's like I find the spirits and the conversation that they take annoying as a reader when yes. I'm sort of like, oh, a man made a choice to write this why did you do that because it was boring but if i'm richard in this scenario in which it's not fictional and somebody didn't make a choice to write it and this is what i'm faced with you're reacting crazy exactly (laughs) so both yeah both both looks at this are like oh i either hate my pro tag or i hate my author i hate both i guess i hate both right now (laughs) he says i enjoyed killing the second guy because the, because of the magic of the sword, because that's how the magic works. They say that's irrelevant. Yeah. And Richard's like, what? And they're like, it's irrelevant. Now you have... It's irrelevant for the next question they're going to ask, right? Yeah. It's not irrelevant, though. I think that ultimately, one of the conclusions Richard comes to, I don't know if it's in this book or whatever, though, is that the Seeker's power doesn't actually come from the sword. The sword awakens the Seeker's power, and then his power is his mind and will. And the sword is just a tool to carry out that will. So so they're kind of saying, yeah, that's all you, buddy. The sword didn't do that. Well, I th- see, I don't know. Because I think they're saying it's irrelevant because the next thing they ask him is like, 
you have two reasons for killing him. Yes. Whether you enjoyed it of your own accord or because you own this sword, it still is a factor yes. when you do these things, Correct. right? Like yeah. maybe even if the sword makes you love it, if you keep killing people because you love it because of the sword, we don't really care that the sword did it. it. We're just trying to figure out why you're making why the choice. Why are you making the choice? Yeah, what do you think is your right core answer for that? So like, yeah, so now you have two reasons you you might have done it. Is it because you have the sword and you like doing it or mm-hmm. because of your friend? Which is the true reason both I killed to protect and because of the sword I enjoyed it. Which that's a good answer. Yes. I guess it's just weird. Like, which is the true reason? I don't feel like... I feel like... Why are these spirits so black and white? I feel like the whole point of spirits... Uh, because they're like AI. Is to be like... Of course there's multiple shades to this. Yep. That's the wisdom we have now on the other side. Instead, the wisdom's like, there are facts. There are hard, hard line ways to know the truth about the universe. Which, like, maybe if you guys are talking about, like, the Fibonacci sequence or something. I believe that, yeah. <laughs> like, I For don't know sure, about yeah. this. Yeah, the, the, the morality the, of the murder. The truth of the galaxies is, is known, yeah. but, yeah. What if you were wrong and your friend didn't need protection? Okay, so this is the, Caitlin didn't actually need his help. Right, and I guess I feel irritated because I'm really trying to think of it from the point of view of the spirits. Yeah. Where I'm like, why would you be asking that? What are you trying to find out exactly? Why are they not stating that? They know it. Right. Why are they saying, she didn't need your help? Does that change your mind? Right. Like, I guess I'm just like, where it just feels, again, like one of those things where Terry really wants to drive a point home. He's trying to make some big... It's Socratic method with spirits. Yeah, and it's boring. What if I keep asking questions? I don't know. Spirits don't act like that. Then you need to like have a wise man on a mountain answering questions. Yeah, and then we called eight spirits and we only have one voice for all of them. That's boring as hell too. Yeah, why aren't there? That would be interesting if the spirits were all actually... Yeah. But it would be interesting too if the elders weren't all actually one homogenous group. I mean, I guess Savidlin and Birdman are vaguely different. Correct. Savidlin just became an elder and he's the cool elder. (laughs) <laughs> and Birdman hangs out with Caitlin. The other ones are all just a clump. So they're like, "What? What if? What if?" Yeah. You, she didn't need your help, and he's like, "The deed is not as important as the intent." In my mind, her life was in danger, and indecision would have led to death. We go back to this theme that keeps coming up. That's like when you're like a a movement maker, like when you're like a guy who shakes it up. You just gotta make hard choices. You gotta do it in the moment, you know? Like, I can't be thinking. I need to be acting. Yeah, some problems don't provide the time to analyze them. You have to take action. You can't just sit there. Mm -hmm. I wish he'd take more action instead of sitting there, but we keep hearing this dumb inner monologue all the time. Yeah, like, I mean... So he's not wrong. He's not wrong. I don't know. And I don't really know what the point is. So the, the main crux there comes from... In my mind, the deed is not as important as the intent. And then they bring up an uh, example to be like, but wait, what wait, if, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. What if the deed and the intent were the same? And he's like, is that possible? He's like, well, when you went to go kill all the elders, us right now, you intended to do it. And the deed didn't happen, but you intended to. Well, if the intent is more important than the deed, then any time you've attempted to kill somebody or even wanted to kill somebody by that logic... You did. You it was just as bad as killing them. Yep. Which okay, I again, yeah, like for like mm. some sort of like philosophy paper. Journey I get, or, yeah, I, get yeah. it, I get it, I get it, I get it. It's like, oh, is the intent actually the thing that matters? Because like, if you actually want to choose that logic, that logical path, then anytime you've ever wanted to kill somebody, you basically did. But Richard says, you have misinterpreted the context of what I said. I said I killed because I thought I had to, that I thought his intent was to kill Caitlyn. Therefore, I thought I had to act or she would die. Not that my intent equates the deed. I guess there is a difference, right? Sure. He's like, I'm sure... I've wanted to kill a bunch of people in my life. That I've um, never actually I, done it. And they go, well, why didn't you do it? And he lists a million reasons why. Mm-hmm. And all of them are fine. Yeah, and then they say, oh, well, did you want to kill those five elders? He says, yes. Yep. And then they say, you intended to. And then Richard just doesn't answer, which I don't understand. Uh, I'm like, 
it feels clear to me the line of questioning like yeah they're being a little hard on him but like i wouldn't think they're not giving the vibe right now that like that's gonna like yeah i yeah i don't even know disqualify him from anything no. They're just making him admit hard things. Right. I'm like, just answer them. Come so on. So, like, with the elders, he intended to kill them, and the sword stopped him. Yeah. Because that means something deep inside, inside of him, of him also didn't. said no. Right. But he, as far as he knew, he did intend to kill them. But mm-hmm. the sword judged them. So he judged them. He did. And even though consciously he intended to kill them, he could not commit the deed because something about him said that they did not deserve to die. Right, so in a way, he also, like, didn't. That's what I'm saying. Right, which is so fine. the intent I, it's is just, actually more complicated it's than just so, the logical intent. There's an emotional intent. Exactly. And a magical intent. That's I just also... find the reductionist angle that the spirits are taking bizarre. Because yep. I don't... Why is Richard more nuanced than the, the spirit... The honored elders? El- yeah. Honored <laughs> elders. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. They say, is this a a case where intent is as the deed so like is this a case with the elders where like you intending to kill them is just the same as having done it richard says like pretty close because like i think it did hurt me almost as much how far i I went with it agreed even though i didn't kill them and that makes swung with intent and it just didn't happen (laughs) so they like so then the spirits say so then we have not it would seem gotten what you said entirely out of context because they're saying yeah i know literally they said slay Um, (laughs) slay they're all like clapping so they're like okay you're trying to claim that intent doesn't always have the same impact as doing it but in this case it seems like it did but again you're like yeah, in this one pro- very specific edge case, sure. And who you know? gives a fuck? Does this help you having this conversation? Because the elders, all they want to ascertain is, are you the right type of person to help you right. murder? And in a couple of minutes, <laughs> that's what they say. They're like, we just want to figure out if like we're going to help you murder. Like, Are you the type of guy we should help murder? And I'm like, these don't seem... These are some bad like questions. The best questions to determine that. And I'm totally fine as a fantasy lover... For these spirits to have passed through Richard and say, we've weighed your heart and we will help you murder this man. And if yeah. Richard then wanted to be pedantic and be like, well, I don't I wouldn't, I wouldn't, don't know if I'd think of it as murder like in that way. And they were like, it, it, you're, you're asking us to help you kill him. That would have been a more that interesting would, That would have been, and it would approach. have cut three pages out. Yeah. It would have been way more like, and he had to grapple with the like, yeah, I want him dead. And I am now asking someone to help me kill him. Oh, I didn't think of it like that. That is yeah, kind of that fucked would, up that would, to requ- it like, would, request that. It would get a lot of the similar themes on the table. Yes, it would. But, like, just feel a lot tighter. Yep. But we didn't do that. Now we are here. We have discussed the hows and the ifs and the whys of ever having wished death upon an individual other than... So Richard's crying now. Richard's weeping. Why do you want the object of magic to stop Dark and Brawl? Okay. How will getting the object stop him? And then Richard. Oh, it dawns like, on oh him. My God, oh my God. It'll kill him. Because if I oh, can I get, didn't think of that. If I can get the object and keep it from him, he will die. Oh, I will murder. kill him in that way. And then he's like, oh my God, they're so right. It's murder. They should have made me cry from questions. <laughs> but the problem is, it's yeah. not even the main object. The main objective actually isn't get the thing so dark and roll dies. It's I need the thing to prevent the world from ending. And yes. by chance a side effect is that he will die the side effect is that he will die and anyone including preschoolers agrees that that's a good thing would you kill one man to save the entire world everyone (laughs) i think and it's like and that man is hitler would you kill hitler to save the entire world it's like yeah i don't know you could make i could be convinced that maybe spirits might be like no, we have like a hard line. Sure, they might. But it wouldn't sound like this. That would be a different conversation altogether. Exactly. They'd be like, we cannot help in the death of another, even if it would save right. millions. We are forbidden from helping. Yes. Kill. It's one or That's the other. Because it's either like, we just can't do that wholesale, not on the it's table. It's like the genie with like, I can't kill anyone. I can't bring anyone back from the dead. If they're like, we can't cause death. I could fuck with and that. And he has to like seek your logic his way into like he- getting help without them directly help. Right. Which is what, mm. but. <laughs> but if you want to be like, we need to like logic out if this makes sense. It's just like, run the numbers, babe. Run the numbers. <laughs> like, I don't. 
understand. I don't know. I'm lost on this. Uh, so I'm just a frog. But yeah, it annoys me because R Richard is like, yeah, you're so right. The whole intent here is to kill him. No, it's not. Because if you could just shut the boxes down and keep him alive, you'd also want to do that anyway. You can't. I understand that, but that's my point. If but, Yeah, but that's irrelevant. But the way they're talking, they would like this, okay? Yeah, yeah. My point is, if you said... Here's two options. Well, that's could... an interesting thing. That would be an interesting question. Right. If you could stop. Well, but no, but once they hear the words boxes of wood and they fucking go on the fritz, so they can't do that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if but they I'm were like, saying... oh, if it were different. That's what, if I this were. this man could live, right. but you'd stop him from doing this. Would you do would that? Would you do it? And, and that, would, that like, would be a great nah, question. Nah, I'm killing him. Then you'd be like, mm. It seems like you want to kill him more than you want to help everybody. Versus if you're like, yeah, girl, he can stay alive. I just want to stop the world and from ending. And that would have paralleled the whole thing with Richard becoming a mud person. It's like, do you want to help everyone or do exactly. you want what you want? And I feel like that's kind that of what we're trying would have to. Been interesting. That's this what is we're not, trying to get at. This is not. <laughs> I just, if I were Richard, I'm like putting myself in this position. If we hit this point of the conversation, I would be like, listen, it's not about that. I just want to stop the boxes of Orton. It's not my fault that he's going to die in the end. But that's not the fucking point. The only reason I left home is so that the entire world didn't die. He hasn't mentioned it once. If it was like, that's off the table. This one dude killed your father in a terrible way. Are you going to travel across the world to go murder him? I'd be like, no. He might, but that's a different guy. It's a different thing. That's, that's not what. Thing. That's not where we're at right Terry now. Terry set us up in such a way that stopping him kills him. So then it's like, yeah, I get, that's his fault for doing it that <laughs> that's way. That's what I'm I don't saying. Know. He put himself in that position. That had nothing to do with me. You're asking us to help kill someone. We Shouldn't we know who we are helping? That's what the spirits say. Well, he says, yeah. I guess so. I guess so. Just it, play yeah. the game. D Richard Sir. won't. He hates riddles and he hates spirits asking questions that are tough. Why do you want to kill this man? He just has many reasons. Hello. I know. It's Hello. Like, it's like pulling fucking teeth. Why? This Why in cause... this conversation is it so hard to get Richard to go, the world is ending. Everyone will die. Why haven't I heard those words coming out of his mouth over 20 and over times? Again. Yeah. So, hey, I'm doing this. You know, dark and roll. The world's ending. I need to stop him. Are you aware? Are Do you, you aware? guys know? Yes, we are. Okay, cool. Can you show me those boxes? No? All right, what well, can you show me? That that should have been the whole conversation. Oh, my God. And then they could be like, we can't, we don't want to help you kill him. We don't know who you are yet. And then, it's like, yeah. Do you want to help, you're helping him kill everyone else? That could have been the argument. Why do anyway. you have many reasons? Well, why don't you just lay out the most important one yep. for us? Yeah, well, he does. Why do you want to kill this man? Because he tortured and killed my father. Because he has tortured and killed many others. Because he will kill me blah, if I don't kill him. Because he will torture and kill... Okay. Shut your mouth, Richard. You could... No, put... listen. Shut your mouth, Richard. What's the number one reason you want to stop Dark and Roll? That's, that's what, what the spirits that's ask. That's what they ask. And what does Richard say? Because... <laughs> because he's going to kill Kaylin. Oh... Oh. <laughs> oh my god. The frogs are crying in their basket. Oh. The frogs are in the basket. Robert's They're crying. going through it. They're crying. Oh my god. It's so sad. <laughs> yeah, that's like the only sad good thing in this entire chapter. I was going to say, there's a little bit after this too with them. Yeah. It's like the only cute likable thing in the chapter mm -hmm. um you're like okay that's sweet because he's being honest that's really how he feels right now and like that's again he could be presenting this much better he say yeah in my heart i am feeling the beauty of life through kaylin and really that is my main priority oh, right now yeah any but poetry would have been nice, also but, yeah. he's gonna kill everybody else too and that also sucks <laughs> it's not that hard but you know he's honest and they don't even care they're not even like that's a selfish answer. They're like, yeah, okay, I can see that. Look, it's not really a selfish... It's like a human answer. Yeah, it is. And he was really honest, and it was hard to be that. Uh, and really rough to make her translate. <laughs> yeah, she's like... she, And then she's like getting so distressed about this, and she's like, oh my god. Char was right. What did that mean? What did Char write Char about? Char was like, fucking tell him who you are, because you're just going to make this worse. Every time. Because if you guys start falling in love, and he doesn't know, and he might... It might break the whole thing apart. You're making it... Char knew. 
Oh, oh, oh. She's alive. She's so angry at the spirits for doing this to him. But, like, I don't know. I really feel like being, like... I am experiencing the beginnings of love right now. Is it really that? Where again, it feels very high school where you're like, oh my God, the most embarrassing, horrible thing you could do to somebody is make them say, I like you. In, in front, front of their of spirit the- ancestors. Like, it's just like, what? Who <laughs> gives a shit? Yeah. It's nice. It's a little something. I think Richard should be able to handle being like, I'm really having feelings for Kayla right now because we're really connecting and going through something. On this journey. Yeah. And like, why are we like, this is the worst. I can't believe they're doing this to him. Is it? It's not that serious. Yeah. It's not that serious. It's not. And, I, you know, I don't even think he takes it so seriously. No, me neither. I, she's just... Kaylin does. Um, she but then they're like, all right, fam. We got you. We saw those titties. I get it. Mm. So what's this magic object you know I'm finding? We got you, bro. They're like, yeah, they're all like... And then like, he they're says... Like, oh, yeah. They're... oh, yeah, no. For, oh, for the girl? Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. So yeah. what's that magic object? And then he says, does that mean you agree with my reason for killing? Why would you ever ask that? Because Richard is pedantic to the extreme. Does that mean... Wait a minute. I gotta ding you back for all the questions you asked. Who cares? So you gotta admit I was right. Literally. Yeah. Shut up. Shut your mouth. So anyway, what was that magic object? Yeah, bro. We got you. Anything. You want that stick uh, stick of spontaneity? You want that wand of fireballs? Mm, oh. You want they're, that? Mm, they're called um the box of Orden. Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh Yep, that's what happens. Spirits screech, the frogs die, it's crazy. Frogs don't die. Frogs are forever. The spirits uh, do in fact scream though. They screech and squeal and, and cower at the name. They say, We are not allowed to we answer. We are not allowed to answer at all at the same the time. The box of Warden are in play, the meeting is over. The bo- Ma- Bebo. 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 And then Richard Heard hits him with the best fucking line. He goes, oh god. They're Wait. trying like run it away. They're trying to they're trying to like get out of the spirit house and he goes listen here spirit traitors <laughs> you're not here to help your people you're yeah, cowards he jumps up he's like you would let dark and raw kill your descendants aren't you here to protect them you're not spirit ancestors you are spirit traitors damn damn <laughs> what the fuck damn um yeah this good i mean at this point if they're leaving and they're saying the meeting's over. You might as well try to piss them off like that. It's and he not... did. And they were like, no, bro. What, what the fuck, bro? Take that back, bro. Yeah. That's not true. That... Settle back down. Yeah, right? they just get said, pissed. Whoa, whoa, and then whoa, he's whoa. like, yeah, let me ask another question. And then they're just like, all right. Uh, good move. Good um, move. Okay, yeah. just don't ask where the boxes are. We cannot tell you. Mm-hmm. Okay. They say, he says, how many boxes does Raul have? They say two. And he's like, mm. so that, but then you're kind of telling me where two of the boxes are. So why? What's up with that third one? Why does that make a difference? And then he's like, uh, is that like a gray area or something? He's just trying to, I guess, figure out if they can like fuck with gray areas. He's just areas. being antagonistic to the fucking spirits. I don't think he's even saying that. I he's don't just, know. He's just being a dick. The gray- and they're like, yeah, we're not forbidden from telling you that he has two of them. Um, I don't know. Those are the no, rules. And then so they say... We know the name of the person who has the box and the names of yep. several people nearby the box, but we cannot tell you their names because that would be the same as telling you where it is. Facts. Okay. Can you tell me the name of someone who knows where the box is, who is not Rawl? Yeah. He's like, tell me the name of somebody who knows where the box is, but is not actively near it right now. And then they're like... We can do that because then you'll go to that person and not and the box. And they'll tell you where the box is if you convince them, but that's not us. Which, that's a fine, like, that seems like sure. a spirit loophole. Spirit loophole. I buy that. Okay. They, like, leave us on a little cliffhanger. Like, they say the name. And then Kaylin's but like, they, Woo. It just says they say a name and Kaylin freezes. They don't say the name, though. So you're like, who? Yeah. And Kaylin thinks, we're as good as dead. Finally, she's like, oh, it's Shoda. The witch woman in the Agadin Reach. Big booby sorceress! We've been waiting. We've been waiting. We've been waiting so long. I cannot wait. I can't wait. Is she and actually... it's not next chapter. Like, what is this description going to be? Huge boobs. That's it. 
No, I don't know. This is what I remember from being young. So that must have been Did egregious. Did you add it scripted. though? I don't think I said this sorceress has giant boobs. No, I think she's described as the classic, like wearing a scooped dress with the like clasp and two heavy mounds of tit. 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 I ran out of air. <laughs> okay. Yep. Pretty sure she has the last seeker in her oh in her house. Oh, so excited! I need more lore. My God, has like a, a give me a more lore. Cuck. Jesus fucking crazy! Oh, yeah. Why is he a cuck? He's like a magic slave to her. That's what I remember. Okay. But yeah, the Agadon Reach. Agadon. And Shota, big booby sorcerer, is coming up. The witch woman. Let's go. Terry, can you just not infantilize every fucking Let's thing? Go. What? Witch woman. Oh, yeah. Shadow thing. I know. I hate this. I hate, like, I'm surprised it's not just like, oh, I took out, I took out my sword thingy and poked. Boink. My, it's my truth boinker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Swingy that thingy. Okay. Um, yeah, so they... the, the people of this world and the powerful people, he doesn't know the powerful people, the spirits. He doesn't know how to give it, like, gravitas. Not at all. In, no. like, a, in a beautiful or... Bone woman, witch mud woman, people. mud people. Like... Birdman. I want... Shadow thing. I know, I want... Dark and raw. <laughs> I kind of like that one. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> I like Mord Sith. I like Dark and Roll. Those Mord are the Sith. best, yeah. like, I like those names. Okay, so they the spirits give him the name of Shoda, who knows where the box is. Mm-hmm. And you're kind of, and like, it seems like it's all wrapping up, right? Richard's like, oh, thank you, thank you. The, the spirits are like, we wish you kind fates, good sir. Richard's like, thank you, spirits. Yep. And you're like, okay. It's over now, but it's not. They, like, start giving him, like, what seems like one last piece of advice. So it's like, okay, you must use your head. That is Dark and Raw's way. Meet him on his terms and you will lose. This, that kind of confused me. You must use your head. That is Dark and Raw's way, right? So we know Dark and Raw is really big on the, like, cerebral, using his yeah. intelligence to get things. So it's saying, like, that's how he thinks, so you need to think that way. But meet him on his terms and you will lose is, like... I think that's saying use your head when he presents the game. Don't meet him on even footing. Okay. It, it's not clear. I agree. That one, if you just read that straight, it doesn't make sense. Well, I was like, but that would be meeting him on his terms. You're telling him to meet him on his terms by thinking like him, but then also don't meet him on his terms. I think it's like think like him and then outthink him. If well, you, if uh, you, yeah, no yeah. shit. I mean, <laughs> beat him. Think better than that genius. Win. You should win. That's my advice. Okay. Yeah, if you win, that'd be great. It will not be easy. You will have to suffer, as will our people, as will other people. And in all probability, you will still fail. And then Richard says, I pledge to do my best. And then they say, we will test this pledge. Dark and Rawl is here in the Mud Village right now. Right now? What is... I had to get my sword. Oh, my God. Oh, is that the frog talking? Yeah, the frogs are like, we're ready to roll out, Richard. Oh, shit, I don't like this. Hell yeah. <laughs> Ready to roll out, brother. There, no, wait, wait, wait. It's like, Dark and Roll's here right now. What? Oh, my God. Ah! Anyway. Um. <laughs> Everybody was dying to know what, how the frogs were reacting yeah, yeah, and feeling yeah. in like the scene. They're like in the scene. fucking, like, bumping around in there, being like, let me at them. Yeah, they're pissed. They're pissed. Yeah, Dark and Roll's here right now. You can't fight him. Don't do it. Yeah, Richard, like, jumps up. He's like, oh, I'll go get my sword. And then they're like, listen, sit down. They actually say that, and yeah. he sits down. And I thought this this was the cutest moment of the whole chapter for me. And I think this is, like, what people get attached to. He, like, goes to sit down to hear them out. And Richard and Kaylin uh, start holding hands, and they're both, like, tearing up. There's something nice. I mean, it's just really adorable. There is something nice about in a big grand tale of world ending magic and evil to have like these two people who at least when bad things are happening kind of react in this really human 
deeply emotional, deeply like innocent sort of way. Exactly. There's something yeah. sweet about that. Yeah. And like, I think when you think about yourself in that situation, you're like, yeah, I feel like I would cry, <laughs> you know? And yeah. like, and, and the fact that they actually do it. And they actually like, just cry and you're yeah. like, oh, that, there's something cathartic and nice about that. So I anyway, agree. that's why one compliment yep. for chapter 28. That's about it. It's cute that Richard I'd and I'd kill Kaylin... him for her and we're, we're cuddling in our sadness. Yeah. Once again. Your sword can't kill Dark and Rawl for whatever reason. Pa- he has more power than you tonight in particular. Mm. Um, yeah. You, in fact, will not do anything but get yourself killed if you go outside. So, yeah. like, th- your courage you need to prove to us tonight is that you have the courage to be like, they're Wait. going to die and it is not useful for me to also die. Fair. Like, that is hard. Yeah, That's definitely. really difficult, and they've sucked at that a lot. They have. Yeah, not jumping right in. This is the first time yeah, where they like, something... sit and let other people die so that you can kill him later. Yeah, some part of you, the pain of like just sitting with the fact that people are going to die is more difficult than being like, I'm just going to run in. I'm running in. Because at least that, because it's just a way to like prevent yourself from having to sit with feeling the guilt, like everything. Yeah, Yeah. it's are are you on a goal oriented quest of revenge, or are you gonna let your emotions ruin it for you? So I didn't. I actually didn't hate this as a test. That's fine. Yeah, whatever. Theoretically, but like, I hate how it was presented. I hate how the spirits are like. All right, I know we're wrapping up, and I don't want to say this, but (laughs) dude's outside right now. Yeah, uh, you know he's been blasting people to shit for a couple of minutes now, and uh, oh well, I hate how it proceeds. Uh, many elements of the story we get, yeah, after. Yep, and so then they, also like yeah, they weren't allowed in. Okay, or out. I'm confused by so actually then, many things. Yeah, let, let's hear it. Let's see if I can explain Terry's. So they're Terry. like, okay, the mud people symbols are protecting you, so Dark and Raw can't find you. But he did. Oh, but now that the mud's been written on you. In the beginning of the chapter, when the sun, the ray of sunlight hit him in the face, and he specifically said, I feel like it hit my face, mm-hmm. Dark and Roll pierced the cloud and found him. Okay, fine, but it's because he's wearing the mud spirit but now, symbols. But yeah, now he's got the mud spirit symbols. He can't so track him any he further. He can't find him anymore. But he, he got a ping, so he was my like, oh, I'm going to head there. Is... Yeah, go ahead. And then they're like, if you pick up your sword, he'll be able to find you. So it's uh, giving Lord of the Rings. But anyway. Sure. Okay, fine. He knows he's with the mud people. Yep. He gets there and he's like, I don't know specifically where Richard is. You're telling me Dark and Raw didn't just literally check every building. Why didn't he just raise the whole village? That's what I'm saying. He has a dragon. What? How big is the mud? Is it like, oh, it'll right. take weeks to burn this place That's down. what I mean. Right. I was like, am I thinking the mud village is far smaller than it is? Maybe we are. I didn't get a sense it was that big. I think I think it quite literally is that Dark and Roll could not enter. Well, that was my thing. But what does that? But okay, they leave the spirit house. They ask like, "Hey, what went down?" And yeah, we get yeah. a whole bunch of information. But yeah. and at no point were they like, "He tried to get into the spirit house, but he couldn't because it was protect." Like, there's no that description been cool. of yeah, no. So I'm like, so he just didn't check the buildings. <laughs> He didn't attempt to. Well, they no. do try and say that he's got a lot of magical things going on. I right they now. did say that. He's really magically busy, so he can't spend too much time here. Right, because Richard's like, Well, I have to leave eventually. And they're like, Dark and not gonna hang out that long. He's too busy. So I guess he was just like, I have ten minutes on my way from here to there. Maybe that's let's see true. if I can just like nuke the seeker real quick. Eh, I'll get him next time. That's I guess how that's... they that's how they were saying. Well, he took it. the time to kill everybody else. But here's the thing. He tracked Richard because of the necklace, right? This is what doesn't make any sense to me. Track Richard, Richard there because of the necklace. Yeah. He knows where he is because of the necklace at all times. Except the clouds, the clouds are a little right. bigger of a realm. Right. Okay. So he finds out where he is. He gets the ping. He goes there. He's at that village. So he flies down. Uh-huh. Let's say his tracking magic still doesn't work for whatever reason. Richard took the necklace off, right? Because he's totally naked, right? So it's sitting in the pile with his clothes. Mm. With the sword. Outside the spirit house. You tell me Dark and Roll didn't just I'll take this. Yeah, that's really confusing. Why actually. didn't Dark and Roll just take the sword of truth and just be Is like Is he like, yeah. can he not or something? Can he not touch it without like turning it to dust? I don't know. Nobody said anything. The uh, sword can't even hurt him. We weren't worried about that? Like nobody was worried. He was like, he just got too triggered because they like had fire campfires going. That's almost <laughs> like, like how they're selling it. They're like, 
I came here for the seeker because I thought I could just kill him real quick. But you motherfuckers are lighting fires out in the wilderness? I'm going to kill like 17 of you and then just leave. And he only kills like 17 of them. Yeah. He came on a dragon. He broke a couple of jaws magically. All right. Well, let's get to the thing. Sure. Let's go. Okay. They like, they fall, Richard and Kalen fall asleep in the spirit house yeah, crying. Yeah, the trip ends. <laughs> Birdman wakes him up in the morning. They go outside, and there's, like, a hunter there. Um, and they're like, hey, tell us what happened last night. Yeah. So he says, a red demon came from the sky carrying a man. So I guess that that's, that's the, the that's Shinga. That's the dragon. Right? No. Oh. That's the dragon. It's not the Shinga. <laughs> I thought it was the, the Shinga. Shinga. And I was like, was it red? No. And it went to the underworld. Oh, it was the red thing it's Richard sees in the first chapter, yes. too. Yes, exactly. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Whoa. And it's the go tell the dragon I want her. I really was just hot on my idea. Shingo came down. No, or... that the dragon like wasn't a dragon. Oh yeah, that would have been cool. No, it's a dragon. It's on multiple covers. Yeah, it's just it's just a dragon. I don't even think it's that like cool of a Does dragon. Does it talk? I think so. Oh. Well, he had to go talk to it. So, De- demon. Okay. All right. Well, that makes sense because I was like, what? Like, what does the shingle look like? Yeah. <laughs> I still don't know, but... So he was angry that he didn't know where Richard was, and he just started killing children, as one does. Yep. And, again, yep. again why didn't he just, like, look in a couple of buildings? We'll never know. Blow and then he became magic. even more angry when he saw that we use fire. Yep. This plot point will never work for me. No. It will never work for me. No. He's trying to make him like anti Promethean, and it's so stupid. It doesn't make any sense. It's a weak. It's you could have it where magically he just sucks all fire That'd out and cool. says, Oh, yeah. you were using fire, and now I'm going to murder you all. And like, that's well, why so here's my thing. It's like he, he made all the fires go out, so I guess he can do that. Yeah. Unless I'm picturing Dark Girl just like. You yeah, stamp it on him out. with like a golden shoe. I can kind of. Oh, God, no! <laughs> I see it. And then be like, it's burning my foot. <laughs> it says, he told us if we use fire again, he will come back and kill every child in the village. Okay, Dark and Raw doesn't strike me as the type to, like, give chances like this. And if you do that again, like, I just think he would be like, fuck y'all. Yeah. And kill Th- everyone. This, this whole book would have, I think, really benefited from having a second in command of Dark and Rawls that is Who not as Demon. brutal as him, that isn't Demon, that could have showed up in the dragon and been like, all right, it's a little outrageous for me to kill all these people right now. Right. I want to, like, sh- make a good show. I'm pretty strong. I'm scary. But, like, I'm not Dark and Rawl. Dark and Rawl would have nuked you all. But he's not here, and, you know, maybe I need something from you guys. Like, like a pragmatist sort of evil guy. Mm. Dark and Raw showing up here, why is he just not wizard firing everyone into a big crater? I just think he would be like, you're using fire, the whole town's up, bye. That's what I'm wondering. Why does he give a shit? Why is he keeping the mud people, like, uh, like why, then giving a little later? warning like, and being I, like, maybe I'll come back? No, you, I, why would you come back? Why would you come back? Next time I'm in Australia, I'm gonna get you, aboriginals, like... <laughs> why? Yeah. What's so stopping then, you from doing it all? Here we go. Yeah. What happens next? What did Dark and Raw do next? Uh, Dark and Raw. He scooped up our favorite boy, little Sidden. The baby that we just saved from the shadow thingies. And he said, this is a gift for my friend. First of all, why would he say that? (laughs) Why would he say it out loud? Like, what is that? Who who, who In what fucking language, too? (laughs) This is a gift for my friend. In mud people-ese? He spoke in a language they understood, and he said that. That's something you might say out loud to yourself, like mutteringly. I don't think maybe. You would, why would you say it? At but you all? wouldn't bother to translate it. <laughs> this is a gift for my pedophile friend back home in your <laughs> language. <laughs> but like, it's like, like what the a only, cartoon. The only reason you'd say it out loud is because you're trying to get across to them. Yeah. The severity or to sc- of what's happening or to scare them, which would. Only makes sense if they know who the fuck Demon is and what that means, but they don't. No. So I, why'd you say it? That, yeah, if he was like, I'm going to have him tortured by a friend who specializes in child molestation <laughs> and murder at my house. 
<laughs> then they'd be like, this terrible thing's going to happen to Sin. I was in shock that they would get us attached to Sidon and take him away to Demon. Yep. Well, he's got to be the, the bait, you know? The bait that wasn't needed because they're going there anyway. I know. Exactly. No, exactly. Yeah. Well, I guess he wasn't really bait. It's just to raise the stakes and make you more like, oh, no. I don't think they... I don't remember them saving Sidon. So. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. No. I think Sidon just gets it. You're lying. We don't get to Dark and Roll's palace to like like a couple... This timeline's not making sense. We're a season away from winter. I don't know where we're at. I feel like we're like four weeks away. And he gets more Sith than like to the point of like uh, amnesia. Well, he clearly gets to Shoda as well. He goes to Shoda. He goes to I think Princess Violet. Then and then more Sith. Right. And he like gets his whole mind erased in like a week and a half. Maybe they only need like three days. Yeah. So then and then Kaylin fucking goes to Vidlin's like my boy. That's not good. And Caitlin's like, well, we saved him once. We'll save him again. And then Richard's like, what did you say to him? And she's like, I lied to make him feel better. Which means Caitlin is literally just like. He's dead. Yeah, he's done for. He's done for. I just told him something. And like, in my mind, I'm like, there's no way Richard's cool with that. Because he's so pedantic. No, he was fine with it. He was fine with that one. The spirit ancestor's like, fuck you for hard questions. His boy just got stolen. You can lie to him. Well, we're allowed. We lie. We're allowed to lie sometimes. Sometimes, I guess. Sort of. Sort of. Sometimes. But true. like somebody at some point could have like a tantrum about that. Yeah, and, and then be he'd be like, like eh, "Yeah, true." I don't know. I don't know. I. It's hard for me because like, I don't mind dark, dark stories no they just need like, to be sensical yeah and but it's not that it's not sensible. i don't know what it is about this that feels so ridiculous or unearned or like i feel scandalized by it in it's some... the scooby-doo of it all yeah exactly there's something it's like r-rated scooby-doo and you're this, like all right well the scandal yeah there's something about it that it makes me feel like it wants me to go like um like be like ooh, like oh no like in a silly way and i'm like well it's not silly i don't want to feel no, that you're... way but that's how you're <laughs> presenting it to me yeah right like i'm thinking about like all the fucked up shit that happens to like children in game of thrones yeah. i never feel oh i feel upset about it the way i'm supposed to but i'm never like oh why'd you put that in the book i'm very like yes. no it, it fits directly in the story good. and it's terrible but the characters are kind of like dealing with the terribleness and it and it it just kind of fits with like the humanness of them. Yeah, I think in order to for me to like be okay with a certain level of depravity exploration, I think I need the writing to be sure. Yeah. Much better than this mm-hmm. cuz it starts to feel cheap. I agree. When the writing's not as good, it to me it just starts to be like I feel like you're just doing this for shock value. It's like a Saturday morning cartoon. With yeah, and like that, level that of, the scene, ugh. the chapter we did with uh, Dark and Brawl and Demon and Carl and all of that, that was okay, right? Because yeah. it was given a lot of context, it had a container to exist in. Yeah, that I could like grapple with and there was like some symbolism that we like dug into where i was like okay because it had all of that i was able to digest it but now kind of like hearkening back to it in this end of chapter cliffhanger style starts to feel weird to me i'm like i don't want to end the chapter going oh the big cliffhanger was sidon's like the the same way he'll be like, and they were stuck behind the big boulder. Ah! And they were, oh, the magical item <laughs> got stolen. Ah! <laughs> oh, Sidon's getting taken to a pedophile. Ah! Hey, no! Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. <laughs> hey! Yeah. hey. I was just thinking in terms of like, I'm thinking about, I can't remember her name. You know when that little girl gets burned at the stake in Game of Thrones? Yeah. The- yes. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? The one, with the girl, Did he, she had like the skin yeah, condition. Yeah, yeah. And spoilers for... 17 years ago Um, that whole scene like it's one of those things where like you get to it 
First of all, there's tons of buildup. Tons. Let's not like even a book and a half. Let's of not like even play. There's tons like, of buildup to this yeah. thing. And when it's happening, you go like, you have that like gut wrenching feeling of like no, no, yes. no, whatever. And this feels so flippant and like I can't yeah. I want to feel that way about it because of course that's how you that's, should. That's exactly you're correct. Yeah. But I'm it's, like it's, my only thought is how, when Sidon got taken by Dark and Raw to Devin. When that's you're, when you're doing terrible things, <laughs> they have to have a certain caloric density. Yes, to they do. Feel, to generate dread. Correctly. Yes. This doesn't generate dread. This no, generates I'm just like, like what I'm sorry, the fuck what? are you doing? I'm like, sorry, what just happened? Who? Dark and Roll swept down on a dragon and said, I'm going to give this guy to my pedophile? Like, I don't, it's like, you're just being bad for no reason. Yeah, um, I forget her name, but she's sweet and you have so much buildup. I mean, you like so her, is Sidon, she's but, sad, but it's you different. Don't, it's different. You have Sidon, so much more. We never speak to Sidon. It's true. Sidon sits in Kaylin's lap for five minutes. Opens the nightstone and then gets abducted to go get raped by a horrible man. Like, that's not like... Yeah, You're true. like, eh, what are you doing? It's like you only introduced him to do this to him. That's... No, that is the other thing. Right. If this he... girl feels like she's going to have such a long-term impact on the character of the father, the character of everybody who's around for the situation. It is having these big rippling effects to this story, to this story in this world and these characters. I, I mean, I believe you guys, I'm sure you're going to be like, Oh, Savidlin comes back and like, okay, I know. I don't know. Maybe he'll do something more with it, which will like, help. Would it, would it have been better if they, if he killed Sidden right now and took like a random other child for this exact purpose, would that have felt better? I think Sidden dying would have felt better and more grounded. Yeah. I think any child being taken for this purpose in this way is gonna feel insane. Would just feel like what? Yeah, I agree. Unless you're giving us Sidden chapters in which Sidden's dealing with been... the journey and okay. the struggle and like he's yes. trying to escape and you're giving him agency. Honestly, I I would fuck with that. Yeah, yeah I that would. That would be kind of like, oh, okay. Oh, imagine like immediately after you get Sidden's perspective. That would like, be interesting. Be like, oh, all right. I just don't think we're going to do it. We're definitely not doing it. Ugh. Yeah. So all then right. Richard goes, he's like, show me the bodies. Oh, yeah. So he Forgot like can take on the, you know, bird, emotional burden of yeah. having... The onus. Yeah, having them die while he was in the spirit house. Um, Emperor Man's niece died. Sad. Sad. See, like, that felt more sad even. Yes. agreed. Like, if Sidon had died sim and his body was there, that would have been like, ooh. Richard's like, we're going to the big booby witch. Let's go. Kaylin's like, we're going to die. We're getting suffocated by those tits the second we show up. I hope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, well, we might as well just ask fucking Dark and Raw where the box is for all good this is going to do. But Clearly, clearly it is going to do something. So yeah. whatever. She's not. I don't think uh, people people have been misjudging Shota, maybe. Or those boobs are so big and Richard's so hot that it's going to work. She's gonna, He's going to get those answers out of Shota somehow. She hugs, somehow. She hugs Birdman and she says, remember me. Because yeah. she thinks she's going to die. Yep. Um, and then Birdman's like, they need an escort to the edge of the land. And Savidlin, despite Sidon being taken away. Maybe because of it. And the hunters are like, yeah, like we will take ten them. of the best hunters pop up. Like, yeah. That's it. That's really we're gonna go. After. Well, that was not not our best. Wow, we were angry. This yeah, episode. we had a lot to say about this bullshit. Chapter twenty eight. My God, I might skip the shout out today. I actually do have some people still in the, but I'm only skipping it because this has been over two hours yeah, and I don't actually think I have that much to cut. No, this is deep, and we got a lot of anger to keep in this one. Because the one I want to do, I feel like we have things to say about, and now it's going to extend gonna, it. We're going to make it like two and a half hours if we do that. Do you know what, who I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. You do? Okay. I do. Well, that's, oh, that's a cliffhanger. Look, oh. that's our <gasps> cliffhanger. No pedophiles. Oh, no pedophiles here. Um, Just shout outs we're keeping hostage. Yeah, we have we have a shout out. We need we have somebody that we need to, we need to discuss some things we, with. We got to talk with you. <laughs> We need, to call, the, we need to call. We need to call. You were thinking one of you. We need to call out. But for now, yeah, for now it's a mystery. It. Two weeks. All of you should be quaking in your boots for two weeks, thinking, "Was it me?" Yeah, exactly. Think about what you've done to us. But one of you, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we know 
We both looked. We did a little peek. Oh, new Pav coming up. New Pav. New P-O-V. Pav next chapter. Princess Violet. And Principessa. Principessa Violet. I'm really excited. Yeah. That's how I I'm remembering know what's it. Yeah, up, I want to know what is courtly life like. I don't think we get a lot. I don't think it's good. She's a princess. Yeah, and I'm know. getting a whole chapter from her point of Correct. view. Correct, yeah. I don't think he does it like uh, George does it. I don't think he's going to do it much at all. I think that he's got a, she's got a court wizard, and I think she's a little bit of a, has a little bit of a snarky dominant streak, and that's all I really remember. Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> can't believe, Shocker. can't believe he would put that in there. Yeah. All so, right. Well, we'll see. excited to read that tonight. Guys, we all love right. you. We love you guys. Frogs out. Robit signing off. Ribbit. Fro- frog it. Ribbit? Ribbit and Robit. Yeah, Ribbit. Ribbit. Robit. Ribbit and Robit. Peace out. Bye.